hi everyone welcome back to sahab academy now in today's sixth video of esop chapter we are going to talk about a small topic that exists in this chapter called as espp employee stock purchase plan till now we haven't discussed anything about this topic right so in this video we're going to understand what is espp and how does it work and how is it different to esop that we have seen in the past five videos okay so let's start the video and let's understand all these things now first let's understand the meaning of employee stock purchase plan see here an espp is a program in which employees can purchase company shares at discounted prices these shares offered by the company under this scheme called as espp those shares are called as sweat equity shares is that okay right now you will wonder after reading the first sentence see the same thing used to happen in the esop also we know we have seen the previous five videos of this chapter and we know that the employees are able to purchase the company shares at discounted prices only so how is this different to esop see espp and esop are almost similar only see esop used to be what it's a share based payment that is made to the employees an incentive scheme to motivate the employees and then in this scheme you know the uh, employees will have a right to exercise the option but not an obligation if they want the shares then they can exercise the options after becoming eligible yeah otherwise let it lapse yes so these things are same with espp also share based payment incentive schemes right but not an obligation but the main difference between espp and esop is the conditions in espp there are no conditions in esop there are conditions vesting conditions eligibility conditions yeah it could be service condition or performance condition once these conditions are satisfied by the employees then only their options become eligible for exercising yeah only then they can exercise and buy the shares or don't buy and let the options lapse isn't it that's what happens in esop but in espp there are no conditions yeah if there are no conditions then what does it mean it means that the employees are directly able to purchase the company shares under this scheme called as espp that's the main difference we have over here okay and then one more thing which is very important in espp is that and that's how you will be able to identify the questions and differentiate it from the esop questions in the exam is when you will see the question you know what will be happening over there esops sorry not esops espps espps will be offered in a year and in that same year you know the those espps will be exercised by the employees and the shares will be purchased if it is happening in the same year then easily you have to identify that this question is espp question is that okay so that's what happens espps are offered and exercised in the same year so grant date and then the exercise date is that okay so whenever the espps are offered immediately what will happen the exercise period will start yeah immediately the exercise period will start in esop it used to be not like that yeah in esop what used to be there when the esops are offered that's called grant date and then there used to be vesting period yeah eligibility period only after satisfying the eligibility conditions vesting conditions then only exercise period used to start and in that period the employees were supposed to exercise their options if they don't exercise within that period then the options used to lapse isn't it now here in espp this vesting period this thing is not there is that okay directly the employees are able to purchase the shares when the espps are offered at the grant date immediately the exercise period will start and they will be able to exercise their options yeah i mean the espp right but another main difference is that another main difference is that once the espps are exercised by the employees what will happen is mostly there will be it depends upon the companies okay there will be post vesting restriction now what is this post vesting restriction see once the shares are exercised what will happen is there will be a condition okay there will be a condition in those shares in those espps that the shares which you have purchased from espp scheme you will not be able to sell that for a certain period that is called post vesting restriction can't sell the shares for a certain period after purchasing them so that is called post vesting restriction we'll talk about that so now let's just see more things and see here how is this different to eso see here the first thing is i've already told you no conditions like service or performance condition which we have in eso 
all right directly the employees are eligible to exercise their offer yeah espp offer right and then the second thing see here espps are issued and exercised in the same year yes that's also a difference between esop and espp so this line yeah this will be helpful to identify espp question in the exam yeah if the espps are offered and exercised in the same year immediately you have to understand i have got espp question is that okay right and then see the third point exercise period starts when the espps are offered that is from the grant date yeah when the espps are offered immediately the exercise period will start yeah in that period the employees will be able to purchase the shares by exercising their offer and then the fourth point is see here existence of post vesting restriction can't sell the shares for certain period you already know that for example if there is post vesting restriction on a certain company's espp shares of 3 years so for 3 year they will not be able to sell the shares if they are not able to sell the shares just think logically those shares under that scheme espp will be a non liquid asset it will be a non liquid asset so if it's a non liquid asset then of course the fair value the price the market value of those shares under espp will be lower than the actual market price of the shares of that company which is traded in the stock exchanges so, yeah so the price of the share under that scheme under that espp will fall it will not be same you know for example i'll just give you a simple example let's say i'm selling pen all right so there is another shop yeah if you want to buy this pen then you can go to any shop and you will get it for 10 rupees and you can you know use it any way you like yeah either you keep it you throw it whatever you want you can do it but let's say i am selling you this pen right and i am saying that see i'm selling you this pen but you can use this pen only after a month yeah so for a month first month this pen is useless to you because there is a condition here yeah there is a condition so now will you buy this pen from me for 10 rupees of course not you will not buy this pen for 10 rupees why will you because if you are getting a pen for 10 rupees in the market in some other shop and you can immediately use it right so why would you bother to purchase this pen from me for 10 rupees and not use it for one month yeah so that's why the price of this pen should be lower my pen actually yeah it should be 7 rupees 6 rupees like that because you cannot use it sell it or whatever you want to do with it for one month only after one month you will have you know freedom to use this pen freely yeah so that's why what will happen is the price will fall all right so for example if there are two shares of itc yeah one share is being traded in the stock exchanges and there is no post vesting restriction then let's say its price is rupees 200 per share and then there is another share which has post vesting restriction yeah if you purchase this share then what will be happening is you know you cannot sell this share for one year let's say yeah then the price will be lower than the actual market price that is traded in the stock exchanges is that okay so the price will be 180 or anything it will be lower than the 200 is that okay so why the price is lower because it's a non liquid asset it has to be lower yeah it makes sense right so what will be happening is you know mostly in the exam question if you get espp yeah what will be happening is in the question you will have two prices of the share of the same share you will be given two prices one price will be the stock market price that will be traded in the stock exchanges which is utterly useless for us okay in the problem solving it is useless for us because here we are doing espp we need the price which has you know taken into consideration the post vesting restriction yeah the price which has been fallen that is 180 so two prices will be given one the stock market price which is utterly useless you have to just ignore that and you have to consider the price the fair value of the shares under espp scheme is that okay when you will see those question you will understand we will solve that type of question in the coming video all right so you will have to take this value this value of the share this price of the share while calculating the value of the option when you will calculate the value of the option you will consider this price here the price which has taken into consideration the post vesting restriction is that okay right and then let's talk about the journal entries yeah see here let me just show you the journal entries see the journal entries are very simple now we'll compare the journal entries with the esop journal entries so that you can understand it better right see here the journal entries are very simple 
let me get the ESOP general entries see ESOP general entry used to be like this isn't it first used to calculate the employee compensation expense yeah used to recognize a liability isn't it and then used to transfer at the end of the year employee compensation expense to profit and loss but this liability used to be there ESOP outstanding here in ESPP there is no concept of liability because as I said that everything is happening in the same year there is no concept of liability okay so all the options or some of the options yeah the ESPPs will be exercised over here if not exercised then no big deal yeah it will not be carried forward to the coming years no 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 okay so that's why you know there is no concept of liability see here the general entry will be very simple when the ESPPs will be exercised at that time you will pass this entry see here bank account debit of course you're gonna get the money and what money are you gonna get you're gonna get the exercise price yeah you already know that isn't it see here what used to be the exercise entry in the ESOP cash or bank account debit it used to play at the exercise price yeah cash or bank account debit exercise price the same thing you're gonna do bank account debit exercise price but here you have to take number of ESPP exercised is that okay right and then employee compensation expense account debit here as I have already told you there is no concept of liability actually this is equity ESOP outstanding account is equity but let's think it's a liability it's easier that way so ESOP outstanding account this concept is not there over here in ESPP so what are we gonna take over here employee compensation expense account debit is that okay right so when we're gonna take that how we are gonna take the amount the amount would be the value of option into number of ESPP exercised now in ESOP what we used to do do you remember in ESOP when we used to take that see here value of option what we used to do was wait 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 yeah value of option where is that formula wait 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 yes see here what we used to do was see here market price minus exercise price that's how we used to get the value of the option isn't it but here you're not gonna do that see here value of the option the first priority is it could be directly given in the question fair value of the option if it is given directly then that's your first priority and you have to take that value of option into number of ESPP exercise is that okay right but if value of option is directly not given then you have to calculate through intrinsic value method same thing we used to do in the ESOP also but we used to take market price of the shares yeah in ESOP here you have to take the fair value of the shares under the plan under the ESPP yeah you have to take this price I've told right two prices will be given this and this you have to consider this price while calculating the value of option is that okay that's how you will be calculating the value of option through intrinsic value method and that's what you have to take into number of ESPP exercise you will get employee compensation expense account is that okay because that's the discount right value of option is what that's a discount isn't it see here if the market price is 150 exercise price is 100 yeah if the ESPPs are offered at this 100 and let's say the fair value is 150 so the difference is what that's a discount the company has to suffer the loss the expense the company has to bear and this expense is of the share over here not of the option of the share yes so this discount has to be debited it's an expense it's a loss right so it has to be debited that's why we are debiting it and later we'll take it to profit and loss fine and then we are offering them what shares so two equity share capital new capital has to be created so to create the capital you have to credit that two equity share capital account and only face value will go over here and whatever extra balancing figure is there that has to go to securities premium you all know this entry this is a simple exercise entry of ESOP only but the difference is here there is no liability ESOP outstanding so we're gonna take employee compensation expense account is that okay is that clear yes and then later this amount employee compensation expense account this has to be transferred to profit and loss profit and loss account debit to employee compensation expense yeah here you recorded that you have to cancel it and transfer it to profit and loss debited credited is that okay right so you understood regarding value of option how you have to calculate this two prices will be given you have to consider only fair value of shares under you know fair value of that shares not shares only share yeah fair value of the share under plan minus exercise price you have to do but if the fair value of share under plan is not given two prices are not given let's say only one market price is given of the share then what are you gonna do you have no option if only one market price is given then what you're gonna do is you're gonna consider that's the fair value of the share under plan and you can just take it is that okay yeah fine
and then see here no concept of liability there is no you know ESOP outstanding or ESOP outstanding account yeah such account is not there because everything is happening in the same year outright yeah offered exercise in the same year there's no concept of liability yeah nothing has been carried forward to the coming years yeah and there are no conditions also we exactly know how many number of employees have exercised on a date and that's what we are recording over here so there is no liability and all is that okay so there is no uncertainty because there are no conditions yeah no performance or service condition nothing is there directly the employees all the employees are eligible yeah who have been offered the scheme everyone are eligible if they want they can purchase the shares through a scheme or if they don't want then let it lapse is that okay thus the whole employee compensation expense will be transferred to profit and loss yeah is that okay right and then if the you know let's say some employees did not go for the ESPP they didn't exercise the ESPP then you don't have to pass a separate what do you say um, you will not pass a separate lapse entry like how you used to do in the in the ESOP you used to do ESOP outstanding account debit to general reserve this thing you're not gonna do why why we are not gonna pass lapse entry because think logically there is no liability yeah you have not created this liability and all in ESPP so what will you transfer to general reserve nothing you can't transfer anything to general reserve so this lapse entry is not there in ESPP because what are we taking over here in employee compensation expense we are taking only those employees you know number of ESPP exercised is that okay number of employees exercise the ESPP yeah only that we are taking is that okay but here in ESO what we used to do was in ESO we used to take employees expected to avail yeah we used to make estimates yeah number of employees expected to avail into shares per employee yeah the yeah shares per employee yeah and then we used to make this calculation and then transfer that to PNL right and we used to create ESOP outstanding account all these things we used to do in ESOP but here there is no liability yeah we don't do this calculations also there's nothing simply we will take value of option into number of ESPP exercised is that okay so only those employees who exercise the option the ESPP only those employees expense will be recorded over here so there is no requirement of lapse entry period is that okay yes you understood that right so the entry is very simple bank account debit we got the money you have to record the expense the discount which the company is offering and then the capital new capital is being created because of these sweat equity shares yeah ESPP shares so to equity share capital to securities premium and then transfer the employee compensation expense to profit and loss is that okay did you understand this rest everything is same okay all the meaning of the things and everything is same exercise price means what concessional price at which ESPP is offered there is no vesting there is no vesting condition yeah that's not there grant date is same date at which ESPP is offered yeah and then uh, value of option the first priority is if the fair value of option directly given take that but if it is not given calculate through intrinsic value method but the formula is different not market price per share minus exercise price no it is fair value of shares under plan minus exercise price but if the fair value of shares under plan is not given let's say market price is given just market price you have to take that you have no option is that okay right so this was the whole concept of ESPP now from the next video we're going to solve the problems and the problems would be only for silver club members is that okay so I hope you are completely clarified about this concept yeah because I was getting many messages regarding illustration 1 and illustration 3 of the ICI study material they were confused why the entries are like that yeah why the entries are like that in those questions not like in ESOP because those problems are different they are based on ESPP is that okay right so this is it for this video I hope you have complete understanding now of ESPP so I will see you in the next video and we will solve some problems of ESPP is that okay right see you in the next video yeah bye